In the world of Elmoran, humans are fairly new to the continent of Yern. As is common in times long past, their stories are often fraught with struggle and misfortune. Sometimes there are glimmers of hope within these tales, as stories turn to legends, as legends grow to something larger than life. Dustthorn Manor has been inhabited by the Thayer family since the first humans came to live on the continent of Yern. In the early days, the humans struggled to survive. A blight had followed them from their homeland and was affecting crop yields. Starving and at wit's end, the humans in this area were dying off. One of the few remaining elves, the Lady Euphemia, took pity on the humans and with her skills and knowledge of plants and crops, helped the humans learn to cultivate in new ways. Crops started to thrive, saving the early human settlers. The Thayer family was one of the few surviving groups of humans, and as the rest of the humans spread across the continent, the Thayers decided to claim this area as their own. The Thayer family took what they learned from Lady Euphemia and over the years learned to grow grapes and learned to make wine. As the centuries passed, the legends of the Lady Euphemia grew along with the wealth of the Thayer family. The idea of Lady Euphemia eventually evolved in the minds of the Thayers as time passed and stories were warped as they do over many generations. Eventually the Lady Euphemia became a goddess in their minds. Dustthorn Manor was built to honor the goddess this family now believed her to be. The manor not only houses this immensely wealthy family, but is in essence a shrine to the goddess of fertility. Dustthorn Manor is located on the eastern coast of Yearn, southeast of Aislung and north of Rivers Bend. It is nestled amongst great trees, a forest sitting at the base of the valley between the mountains and the sea. It is here that Thayers managed to survive thanks to the help of Lady Euphemia, and it is here they will reside as long as their bloodline lives on. I hope you enjoyed that bit of lore for Dustthorn Manor. This is one of my favorite builds I've ever done. The concept began as a way for me to test out building with gothic architecture. I worked on a few builds, culminating this one, my favorite of the builds I designed. And as I was working on this design in particular, I was talking with Legendary Porpoise about how excited I was with this build. After some discussion, he decided to let me add it into his world of El Morin he's been working on for several years now. He also helped me weave the story of this build into this rich and detailed lore he's been working on for the past several years. Ultimately, I think this build is a wonderful set piece and is a great addition to El Morin. I'm not only proud of this build, but also so thankful that Legendary Porpoise has allowed me to add it to what is my personal favorite Minecraft world. Dustthorn Manor is built up on a uh, raised area right up between those mountains and the canyon over there and the sea. That's again on the eastern side of Yearn and El Morin. It's It's got a lot of really cool features, I think. Um, the build itself obviously heavily inspired by Gothic architecture, so it's got lots of details, lots of arched windows and random bits and bobs everywhere to really make everything kind of pop detail-wise. It's got a statue of Euphemia on the front, but also there's a little little garden with this, another statue of Euphemia that people hang out in and do some worship. 
Uh, it's got the servants' quarters situated outside with a chicken coop and a little farm area so they can be self-sustaining for especially the long winter months when they're not able to properly grow grapes, maybe at a time that trade is not as good for them. Uh, it has the pond with the gazebo uh, over it and also a little nature trail going through the back with lots of really cool places to sit. I uh, put some details in that I'll show in the walkthrough that kind of showcase, you know, just like little micro stories within the within the grounds themselves. The building itself is five stories, which is crazy tall. It took me a lot of time to figure out how to um, do the whole interior. Again, we'll we'll go over the the walkthrough. It was I'm quite happy with how it all turned out. Another couple of cool features I really like is it's got a little crenellation in the front, little kind of extended tower that juts out from the build itself. Um, with a pointed roof and then on the back it's got another huge tower that houses the main staircase um, with a huge huge like I guess bay window kind of a thing but it's so big I'm not sure it's classified as a bay window anymore but yeah I, th I think I think the details in this really trick the build from like looking kind of neat to holy crap just and that's the, the thing about gothic architecture just details everywhere um, there should never be a, a spot of wall that's just flat anywhere, you know? <laughs> it is, however, quite time-consuming to do these kinds of things. All right, as we finish up the time lapse here and start going towards the cinematic shots, I want to thank you all for watching. Again, thanks to Legendary Porpoise for letting me not only be a part of his community, but help build in his world. Please check him out. Check out El Morin. Uh, he's got a Discord. I'll link it in the description. Pretty incredible community, in my opinion. Again, thanks for watching. Stick around after the cinematics. I'll do a brief walkthrough.
All right, now time for a walkthrough of the manor and its grounds. We'll start out here, right outside this lovely gate main entrance. To start off, we have this lovely walkway that leads to the house, to the pond, but also to a little seating area where they can worship Lady Euphemia. Sit out here on a nice lovely day, whoops, and just take it in, do some worship, do some prayer, or maybe just sit in silent repose. There's two paths that lead around the little garden, and both paths lead out to the servant's area. So coming down this way, it's well hidden. You can tell it's here, but it's harder to see for guests that are just walking to the main house. The servant's house is quite lovely. And it starts off with a little laundry area outside. On the inside, we've got this communal kitchen and dining area. Very well, you know, very well designed, even though it's simple, it's still really nice. Um, that being said, the uh, sleeping arrangements are quite cramped. <laughs> Granted, they spend most of their time out doing work in the manor, on the fields, in the yards, uh, and so they really only sleep and eat inside the house. Coming around this way, we've got a chicken coop, some random clutter, you know, uh, a lovely covered firewood area. And then over here, we've got the vegetable garden and herb garden for the kitchens. We do have a servant's entrance over here. It's how they can get in and out of the out of the cellars, into the kitchens and all that kind of thing. Um, and then behind the manor, we have this actual little nature trail with a bunch of little seating areas for people to hang out, maybe have some drinks, eat some snacks, read a book, that kind of thing. Just generally relax, have a picnic. And then over here is actually the entrance to that will lead to the vineyard itself. And then again, we get back to the front where the pond is. There is a pet trail that uh, connects that way, or you can come across these little bridges under the gazebo. You know, enjoy the nice dragon statue that spits water, enjoy the ducks, whatever else that you like out in nature. All right, going inside. In the main foyer here, it does lead to a few different offshoots and rooms, but it also leads to the stairwell. We're going to start downstairs and then come back up to do a tour of the upstairs. All right, so down here throughout this long hallway, we do have those doors again that lead to the service entrance. In here we have the main cellars, lots and lots of barrels of wine being stored here for various different ages, depending on the vintage that they're trying to make. This room houses their private stock. So these are all the fancy, fancy bottles, maybe bottles they've collected or are making special for other people. Um, and then also, we've got the little barrel where they take the dregs, the extra, when the, when the bo bottle's almost empty, not enough for a glass, they pour it in here, they'll maybe rebottle it, sell it as the cheap stuff, or maybe the servants will drink it. And of course in here we've just got a little storage closet area, some tools, some cleaning supplies. Going back to this hallway, we do have a nice little cubby with some more storage in it. And this leads to the washroom. This is where the servants would wash bedding, wash table linens, tablecloths, napkins, you know, wash the, the actual lord and lady's clothes, anything and everything that needs to be washed would end up here. This room is the kitchen itself. We've got a nice selection of dried goods, some hanging animals, hanging salamis, extra firewood, this lovely oven stove fireplace. Just really well stocked, huge kitchen. On this side, we have another kind of secondary kitchen where maybe they would do food prep or finish the dishes in here. It's also where the servants would have their meals uh, when they're working in the house. This little room leads to a pantry. Again, just some storing some herbs, some food, spices, anything food related, kitchen related that can be shelf stable. And then in here, of course, we got firewood and coal for the kitchens as well as for other places in the house. And this also does lead back into the cellars. 
All right, let's go back up the stairs, back into this foyer. We get another nice look at the foyer. Great seating area, some books. Nice, nice stuff here in the foyer. All right, we're gonna go this way, which leads into a big study office area. You know, the Lord Lady may use this, but also guests that are here may be able to use this to get some writing done, some work done if they need to. Uh, maybe do some transactions or deals. They also have this lovely library and seating areas here as well. Maybe some deals would get done here. Talk about trade, share some logs of, you know, of different goods and services they're trying to barter with. Going through here, we have this back little hallway. Just a really pleasant hangout area. You can see a little bit into the nature area. Got some books, a nice seating area, a little couch. It leads back into the foyer again. Right, so now going through here, we have the grand dining hall. Really, really nice, grandiose. This is where they would treat their guests to the best food and wines available, trying to sell them on their wines usually, of course. Since this is a vineyard, there's wine everywhere. All right, and then just a nice little balcony that looks out on the, on the property. Have a, have a post-dinner drink out on the balcony. And here is the seating room. This is where they would entertain their guests after the meal is done, or maybe even if it's midday. Um, lovely view outside, really nice rowing fireplace, comfy couches, books, sundries, you know, everything around that you could think of to help entertain guests. And going through here, just another little, nice little hallway that leads back to the main foyer. All right, let's go upstairs. I love this huge vaulted window, really nice. Coming all the way up here, you can see there's a little balcony to see out over the window again. This is the main level that the family mostly lives on. Uh, so down here, we've got just another really nice, simple hallway leading to a couple of bedrooms. So some, some of the family lives in here, nice little double bed, great views, very comfortable, really nice wardrobes, some books, really lovely and cozy bedroom. This other bedroom, very similarly in posh. Uh, still, I love all the tapestries. I think they look great. We've got this really nice headboard for this double bed. Really looks great. And again, a decent view, not as nice as the other room. Going back down the hallway, we lead to the family's living room. This is where they would mostly hang out when there's not guests around. Yeah, maybe they may go downstairs, but oftentimes they would stay on this floor. Again, just really nice sitting area. We've got also their personal library. You know, maybe they'd have logs and records of sales and what wines are ready to go, what wines are not ready to go, and how long they have to be. You know, that kind of a thing great view of everywhere from inside this library. Everywhere on the front anyways. We also have two balconies. We've got the back balcony, which does look quite nice. With a little covered awning in case it's raining or too much sun, since this is not a covered area. And then again, the front balcony has a fantastic view of the area of the manor but also has a covered a little umbrella for a little covered sitting area in case of rain or too much sun through these doors we have the master bedroom nicest and biggest bedroom in the whole house they have a really nice vanity their own fireplace you know fantastic views again of course and then this really cool covered four, uh, four corner, four poster bed. Uh, thanks to Legendary Porpoise for helping me design this upper portion of it. I was really struggling on making it look good and he just popped in and was like, bam, what about this? And there you go. Going through here, we have their own personal study. And after the personal study is their own personal balcony to view outside. The master bedroom is quite nice. All right, moving on along. If we go up the stairs, you see this nice little stairs hallway 
stairwell uh, does have some things on the wall for decoration to make it feel nice and cozy. Really good, high quality wood paneling everywhere. But we're gonna take this right. Uh, in here, we have first and foremost, another living seating area. It's kind of more like a study with little private nooks for reading, writing. And then this other room with a little bit more reading and writing. It does have some nice books and scrolls in here. Maybe the Lord would do a little bit of work up here, um, especially in winter when he needs to be warmer, stay up higher in the, in the house. The other nice thing about this is there's a secret in this room, a secret area that only the astute may find. What do you know? They keep some of their wealth hidden away in a hidden room behind a false wall. All right, now we have the really nice high-end fancy sitting area in this long hallway in here that leads to the final bedroom of the house. Well, the final, not servant's bedroom. We'll get to that in a second. So this bedroom is like an in-law suite. You know, the Lord's mother lives here. She's older, but you know, she has, she lives in comfort. Really nice bed, it's another really nice vanity and their own little private little, little reading and writing nook. Outside of this, we do have another little balcony that has a great view over where the vineyard will be and the sea and all that kind of stuff. A little great little balcony. All right, now we'll go up the stairs one more time. Another little sitting area. And up here we have where the servants that actually wait on the Lord and Lady live. So the two servants that actually, you know, do all the interior stuff for the, for the family outside of the cooking, of course. Um, they live up here. They have a nice little study upstairs. Really nice and toasty in the winter. Probably way too hot in the summer. They do have a small bedroom. They share it with, it's a little bit of a storage area in the small bedroom with an additional storage area beside it. And then the final secret of the house, not a super secret, like if you're up here, you'd find it. But why would you be up here? Who goes to the servants' quarters? Well, at the very top, the Lord and Lady have their own altar to the Lady Euphemia where they can worship her in the peace uh, and quiet here so they don't have to worry about other people ridiculing them for essentially worshiping a false goddess. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like what you saw, please check out the Legendary Porpoise YouTube channel. Check out his Discord to find out the details to actually join his wonderful world of Elmoran and explore it for yourself. Once again, thanks for watching.